Hey, in this lesson you're going to learn about Apple's Advanced Video Quality Tool. It's a Mac-only tool, and you should download the exercise files from the, uh, the text below. What we're going to learn here is basic operation, how to interpret the scores, and how to visualize the scores in numbers. This lesson is available in two courses from the Streaming Learning Center, Streaming Media 101 and Computing and Using Video Quality Metrics. You see the course description, pricing, and a bit.ly URL below. A little bit about the Advanced Video Quality Tool is built by Apple. It's a command line tool and it's available as a developer tool at this bit.ly URL. And you'll have to sign into your developer account, download the program, and then install it on your Macintosh computer. A little bit about the metric. Like most advanced metrics, the Advanced Video Quality Tool is a reference metric, which means it compares the compressed video with the source video to render an opinion. And what that opinion is, is a prediction of how a human being looking at that video would rate it. One of the really convenient things about the, the Apple tool is that it rates the videos on the same scale that most opi mean opinion scores are rated. So most subjective ratings use the mean opinion score rating, 0 to 5. And you know 5 is excellent, 1 is poor. You see the ratings uh, over here. And Apple's tool does the same thing. So if you want to understand what Apple predicts a subjective viewer would rate that video as, you have an absolute correlation with, with the typical rating used for subjective ratings. And Apple did a lot of research when they created the tool. And what you do when you produce a tool like this is you, you do tests to see how the, the scores of the metric correlate with actual subjective human ratings. whole point of the metric is to predict the quality that viewers will rate the video. And Apple, like most metric vendors, go through a bunch of tests. The ones I'm most familiar with are the Pearson uh, coefficient. And this rating here basically says if you see a, a Pearson rating of 1, there's absolute correlation. So if every human who rated the video who rated it a 5, you would get it a 5 using the, uh, the new Apple metric. Now what we see here is 0 0.91, 0 0.94, 0 0.81, which is hmm, still pretty good. And then a couple, of, uh, a couple in the 90s. And what we see in this rating is that you know, if you're between 0.8 and 1, you've got a strong positive correlation of the dependent variable y, in this case the, uh, the rating from the video quality metric with the actual subjective ratings. Most video metrics are shipped with statistics like these, and most of the time you see them in the you know, 0.8 to, to nobody ever hits a 1. But you know, 0.8 to 0.95 is a, is a very, very strong rating. That means the tool will, in most cases, ac accurately predict what a subjective rating would be, which is you know, obviously its job. So how to run the tool. Basic operation is you, you call the tool on the command line. You load the test video first, and then the reference video. And you know, dash T means test, dash R means uh, reference. Now, there are some other switches I think you're going to want to use uh, pretty much from the, from the get-go. Now you're going to want to name the output file because otherwise the metric will apply a date and timestamp, so you won't know that you know you, don't, you won't know the name of the file being analyzed unless you, you put the output file name in the uh, command line. Temporal pooling versus uh, temporal pooling is the way that the scores are aggregated. Um, the default of the tool is arithmetic mean, and harmonic mean better incorporates the variations in the. Um, in the scoring. So arithmetic mean just adds up all the scores of all the frames of, of the metric. What, what harmonic mean does is it, it will give you a worse score if there's a lot of variations in the file and a better score if there are few variations. And that matches you know, subjective ratings as well, right? Um, most humans would prefer consistent quality as opposed to very, very, very good, very, very bad, very, very good. Even if the arithmetic mean was similar, the harmonic mean gives you a more accurate representation because humans will notice that and will uh, rate the video poorly because of that. And then segment duration, this is kind of a funky one. The, uh, the, the utility doesn't give you a single score for the entire file. It gives you a score for each segment. So if you don't put the switch in, it assumes that there's a six second segment. So for a 20 second file, it's going to give four scores, not a summary of the four scores. It's going to give you four separate scores. So you can set the segment duration anywhere from, from you know, one to 60. And the test files we're working with are 20. So I'm going to set it to, to 25. And we're going to get one score, which is what you want. I'm really not sure what Apple was doing with, with this, uh, you know, why they don't give you a single score. But, um, but you can kind of spoof the system with shorter files if, uh, by using this switch. And you'll see what this looks like right now. 
So the, the test files that we're going to be looking at in a moment, this is the command line I would use to run the advanced video quality tool. And, you know, I'm calling the tool, I'm setting the duration at 25. I'm using harmonic mean as opposed to arithmetic mean. I'm naming the output file, the same name as the, um, as the compressed file that I'm looking at. And I have 25 here to designate that it's a segment duration of 25. This is the encoded file. This is the source file. So pretty simple to use. Some valuable switches you may want to work with at some point. Um, you can set the display resolution, uh, you know, the, the assumed resolution that the video is being viewed on. In most cases, that's going to be 1080p for 1080p video. Um, if you're working with 4K, you may want to experiment with, with higher resolutions for that, but the default is, is uh, 1080p. You see this, you know, if I'm doing a, a test for a website that, that has a lot of visitors who view the video in a window, say a 640 by, by 360 window, I might want to set the display resolution for the test at 640 by 360 because that is, you know, that's that's the resolution people are going to watch the video at. On the other hand, if everybody's going to full screen, if you're Netflix or, um, or, or even YouTube, then, you know, 1080p is probably appropriate for 1080p videos. You can set the viewing distance. You know, if you have an application, you know, if, you, if people are watching on a phone or if People are watching on a far away uh, display. You can you can dial that in. That's not something I experimented with. And interesting to know that the utility can also produce mean square error, which is a, another objective metric, a pretty basic one, as well as PSNR scores if you want to add those in. And then finally, the output format. I use CSV, but you can also get JSON output, which is which is useful if you're working with those kind of files and you want to integrate the data uh, programmatically. So here's what the output looks like. Not one, you know, not not wonderfully easy to work with. So, you know, this is the CSV file shown. It can be a JSON file as well. And the analysis details, these are the uh, parameters that you encoded with, with that you produced the file with. So um, segment duration was 25. We did temporal pooling with harmonic mean. This is the display resolution, and this is the viewing distance, which is the default. And then you get a listing of all the frames, and then all the way at the bottom, you get the segments that I talked about before. So by default, with the six second segments, with this 20 second file, I got these four segment scores, not a complete score. And again, I'm not really sure what Apple was thinking there, but with a shorter file, you can spoof the system by including a segment duration that's longer than the file that you're testing. If the file's longer than 60 seconds, you can't do that. You're gonna have to import this into Sheets and then you know compute the overall score yourself. And that's, you know, it's, there's no visualization here um, like we see with some Windows tools like the, uh, the Moscow State Video Quality Measurement Tool. But what I did, and, you know, I'll show you the sheet in a moment, is I just, um, we, the, the test that we're working with have, has two files, ultra fast and very slow presets. And all I did was bring the results for the frames into the same sheet and then created this graph. And what this shows us is the, uh, the very slow file, which is in green down here, was very consistently up around five. And the ultra fast file, which encoded much more quickly, and you'll see that in a moment, uh, varied all the way through the file and had some really low points here. So this is around frame 429. You might want to go to that frame and see you know, what that quality actually looks like. This is FFmpeg. This is a, a bash file. So what I did here is I just wanted to create two files that would have two different quality levels. So we had the input file is the 20 second football clip. We used a, an H.264 preset or an X.264 preset, ultra fast here. We targeted uh, 4.5 megabits per second in both cases. And then we used ultra fast preset here to produce a file called ultra fast and very slow here to produce a file called very slow. And then once we encoded the files, we used the, uh, the advanced video quality tool to produce the scoring that we'll look at in a moment. So here we go, and let me, and then, okay, so this is the ultra fast file, and you see how quickly FFmpeg moved through that file. And what we're doing with the preset is we're trading off quality versus encoding time. And as you'll see in a moment, and it's going to be a long moment because this does take, uh, take a few more minutes to, to encode, the file sizes produced by the encoder using the two presets are, are actually relatively close, even though the scoring is, um, is very diverse. You know, the, the file encoded with a very slow preset 
is, is much, much better. Let me sign off and I'll come back when the file is ready. Okay, so we're done with the second file now. And now you'll see how quickly the advanced video quality tool goes through. Here's analysis one, here's analysis two, and you're going to have all these files uh, in the folder that you download. So here are the two CSV files that we pr uh, produced. Here are the two encoded files that we produced. And, and like I said, the uh, the very slow file is 11.9. The ultra fast file is 11.2. So there's about a you know eight or nine percent difference. Not significant. Or certainly not as significant as the scoring differences. And then here's the here's the individual file for the very slow. There's another one in here for ultra fast and then here's the combined numbers which again you'll have and all I did was copy and paste the very slow numbers here and then created the chart to get this visualization so it's a pretty fast tool it's pretty easy to use you know it outputs CSV files that you can quickly import it's nice that you can create a graph like this for two or three different comparison files and um, and, and it's a free tool from Apple so that's the new Apple advanced video quality tool